Welcome to the Josh Heisman Podcast. Here we are on episode 41 of the podcast, and it is a a rainy day here today when we're recording this, but that's all right. It was 70-something and sunny yesterday, so so we got our good times in, and it's all all good. But I have Celia Van Marth in the studio here. She is the head of Artful You, a program here at Create Hope Studios, but you know what? Her story goes way back Mm -hmm. when it comes to her art experience as a teacher, and she is just a fascinating person. And so I am thrilled to have you here, Celia, on the podcast. How are you doing today? Thank you, Pastor Josh. I'm honored to be here. Yeah. It, we were just saying before we went live, you've been here at New Hope now since 2018. That's correct. How did that even come about as you as you head up the art program here at the church? It's a wonderful thing. How did this even happen? Well, it was all part of God's amazing timing. Uh, and it was a little bit early for you guys because you were um, in the transition period of taking the preschool uh, daycare area that this wing of the church was, and mm-hmm. you were starting to, just beginning to um, convert into what the vision was of Create Hope Studios. And I was just down the road at another place where... Um, God allowed me to be with um, another program. I I didn't start out being the director or the main teacher. I was just part of a homeschool program that started in another church. And they had drama and they had music originally and then art. And eventually I was asked to be one of the rotating art teachers that would rotate in and art and in and out of um, teaching art. And then the kids um, would also enjoy drama and the other subjects. And after being there for 10 years, their Mother's Day Out program was growing, and they needed the room that we were occupying, and so we had to leave, Mm -hmm. and they enjoyed having us, but it was just that time. And then the person that, um, at that time, I was then directing it, the original director, which is another story, too, because I didn't see myself as being the administrator or director, Uh but... God had plans in that way, too. And Normally, the creative types aren't really the... Uh, I, no, uh-huh. when that director was um, stopping it to go for her master's program and do something a little different, how Lord was the Lord was leading her, I said, okay, that's that was a nice run. But then uh, the program shut down, and then that summer, the parents begged me to direct it. And I just said, I don't think I have that administrative, you know, gift. But, you know, different seasons, and God, you know, called me to try it, I just said, mm-hmm. okay, I, I guess I'll be willing to try it. And yeah. um, so some, did you, sometimes it's still a struggle. But <laughs> <laughs> So did you reach out to us first or is that, so did we Mark then, Eddington was on staff at the time here and did he right. find you first or? Well, did, we just, my drama teacher and I, we both felt, um, my son had done, uh, I think, Awana here. So we lived nearby okay. and, um, and there were, uh, there were just some other instances where this church, you know, kind of. Uh, it just seemed like to my friend and I, she taught the drama, this might be the place. Maybe this church would be an opportunity. Mm. And so we sent an email, but it was like near, it was in the summertime and either we were going to continue or not. And um, so we weren't sure, we weren't sure. And it was just sort of like in the 11th hour when we finally were contacted by you actually. Mm -hmm. And you said, oh, I've been in and out this summer. There's different things going on, obviously. And so you said, I wasn't quite sure our building's ready yet. And you invited us to come in and take a look. And oh, we wow. said, we'll, we'll take it <laughs> if there's any way you can, because otherwise our families, we're going to have to go find some other creative arts program. Yeah. And the beginning of Create Hope Studios for us was really, I had gone to a conference years ago and was listening to one of the presenters at the conference talking about how he was concerned that the church had given over the rights to creativity Uh and art and music and movies and production. And we had basically pushed that all aside Mm -hmm. and children were learning those things outside of the church. And so they, they, these creative gifts that people are given, they, they don't ever associate them with the church. 
that they should use them in the church. And, and when the fact of the matter is, God is the creator of all things. Absolutely. And God created us in his image. God creates, the, you know, the, the Psalms tell us the heavens declare the work of the Lord. All of these mm-hmm. different things, we see God's creativity. And the presenter was saying, why is it that we push creativity outside of the church when we should be bringing kids in, mm-hmm. even adults in, and, and showing them uh, that creativity can be used in the church for God's glory. Absolutely. And so we came back from that conference and, you know, I'm a, of course, outside of, of being a pastor and preaching and teaching, but I'm also a, a songwriter, a singer, right. and uh, I don't get to do it as much as I used to, but that's very much a heart of mine. And even in messages, creativity, I, I, mm-hmm. I do oh, that so like to, to bring that into it. And so Create Hope Studios became a place of, of there There are other teachers out there like you. Mm. And you have a, you talk about the administrative side of things. You're going, I don't know about that. But your gift for teaching art and watching you work is awesome. So I'm so oh, glad we got connected you. with that. Well, I am too. It was just the right, God really shut one door and then opened the next one. And yeah. So it was me who contacted? I yes, was, yes. Wow. And I... <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, you know, we were like, I'm not quite sure. I thought, okay, it's just God's time to have the door closed, even though we really both didn't feel that was it. But, um, and so you invited us in, like I said, and I know walking through, you're just like, well, this room's, you know, getting done and, and uh, so on and so forth. The dance room wasn't done yet. Mm-hmm. And that ended up being a wonderful room. In the beginning, it was... Um, my, my partner that I hired, my friend, she did drama with me for 10 years. We had a program called Arts Alive. So it was continuing from the original person that started it in the other church where it was art and drama. And then, um, and then it just became art. Mm-hmm. And so, um, but we were able to use, the, you know, the wonderful fellowship room. And then for me, it was amazing because before I always had to store everything in a closet and then haul everything on a cart it was still sort of art on the cart, but I, I'm just spoiled. And now I'm still overflowing, but to have the space, permanent shelves mm-hmm. and, and to be in two rooms that I can use and uh, a sink yeah. right in the room. It's amazing. It's incredible. Well, you have so many wonderful things on the walls that, that in, in your space that you handle the artful you section of Create Hope Studios. And, and it's, it's awesome. I love the, the art that you feature. And we're going to talk about some of that. But um, I, I wrote down, um, you know, you, the scriptures that you have written, you know, Ephesians 2.10, that, we, you know, for we are God's workmanship created uh, in Jesus Christ and, and for good mm-hmm. works. And, and you have that there. And so maybe maybe take me back before even what, what in the first place made you, you know, I don't have that artful bone in my body. <laughs> you mean not the visual? Not the visual. Part. Well, I have, here's what's so crazy. I have a visual creative part, but that's where I can't draw. I can't oh. do those things. Now I, I've seen, I know that you could teach me how to do it because I've seen you work with people and do magic. So well, I love to encourage but, and show some tricks. And well, where did tips. that come from? What, when did you first know that you had this gift? Well, I think, um, when I think back on it, my, some of my favorite first memories, I'm one of eight children, first of all. My mom had eight of us within 10 years, and so um, I'm number five. And there's a picture of me when I was probably four years old, black and white picture, and sitting at a card table and brothers and sisters and toys all around. And But there I was in my, on, in my place, like coloring. I was coloring, and it's a joyful thing for me, even in the midst of maybe some chaos. Mm -hmm. And and there's a peace that I could feel. Uh, Also in kindergarten, I also remember standing outside and it was in California, being outside on a warm, sunny day and just painting at the easel. And I don't really remember what I was painting. It was just that moment and feeling the sunshine and smelling the temper paint and just being in heaven. And I also got to help the teacher clean the brushes. <laughs> and I, I really enjoyed that. And then all these years later, I'm still washing out paintbrushes. But um, I, I didn't, I thought everybody enjoyed and just had, I just felt God's delight now. You know, I, I just knew I came alive and those 
Um, I had to beg my parents actually for my first set of watercolors because mm. we we pretty much had a lot of crayons going around. My mom never allowed Play-Doh. As far as I remember, I remember being at a friend's house first experiencing Play-Doh. But, you know, paints and Play-Doh can get kind of messy with eight people, eight yeah. kids running around. But um, so those experiences were just, I just love doing that. Uh, and so then it grew. I was just always taking art classes up and did junior high. And I also wrote poetry and enjoyed just the arts. I wasn't, I would, I would get in trouble sometimes for daydreaming a lot. Mm-hmm. So like I remember in third grade, my parents had to have a talk with the teacher. Um, but I was so excited when I got the piece of paper that had a big blank space that uh-huh. you could draw something. And then, yeah, there were still the lines you had to do some handwriting on there, but I don't know. Those kind of connections just were there from the beginning, it seemed like, for me. Mm -hmm. And then um, I guess even in high school, I would um, take for the creative classes that when we had options. uh, I did enjoy music, but I'd play guitar and do that kind of in my room alone. Uh, But art, I loved doing it within the community with classes. Mm -hmm. I definitely like doing it in a group setting. And, um, and then in college, I just kept majoring in art. And eventually someone talked me out of that. I ended up with a degree in interior design only because that person felt you'll never make a living with art. And so do this. And they meant well, but, um, Anyway, there were some experiences. Bless their with, heart, right? Bless <laughs> right, their heart. Right. <laughs> but you know what? God's going to have the path that he's going to... Um, I love that Psalm 1611, I think it is about, you know, about that he, he knows the path for mm-hmm. me. And um, and especially being in his presence and his, in his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And I, I just, I could see looking back now how um, I also... I tried interior design. It didn't click for me. And then I just went back into being a server in Beverly Hills for a while, paid pretty good money at the time, and then eventually did a kid's teaching job that came along. I was married then and wanted to try and have some of the similar hours with my husband. So I did a teaching job, but teaching kids on Apple IIc computers, if you remember those new little things. And I love being with the kids, but the computer part Not that part of it. Not even the beginning Mm -hmm. part of computers connected with me. Yeah. But well, it's definitely fun when you sit down with kids and because they, they haven't been tainted by the world yet when it comes to tamping down that creativity right? and they can visualize and, and, you know, our our little girl, Alyssa, who was just on this a few weeks ago, (laughs) she, uh, she's a trip. I mean, she can just kind of play in this world that and she and is nobody creative. else we can't see, but she's got everybody doing this and doing that and creativity and drawing and painting. And, and yes. you're right. When you work with kids, you, you get some insight into that, you know? And one of the things that you're awesome at is you even have some adult classes that you've been doing where it's been fun. Uh, people from the church or people from the community will, will come in and they'll say, look what, look what Celia had us do. And I didn't know I could do this. And then you, and you, and I'm like, you didn't do that. <laughs> it, you, I love that. You, you're able to to bring things out of people in their mm. creativity that they didn't even know was there. I, I believe God did gift me specifically in that way. Um, as far as just, I love creating within the context of community. And I do have a studio at home and I do, you know, go down there and I, I try and, you know, be disciplined to a certain extent to get paintings finished that Mm -hmm. I started. I kind of struggle in that area. I have a certain perfectionism and, but also it's just so much more natural for me to create within community. And I have such a joy and a pleasure to help people realize what God has given them, you know, an imagination, creativity. And, and they'll often say, I can't even draw a stick figure. And I love it when people come into a paint workshop or Uh it, and it, and it doesn't mean that everybody has to have the amazing gift of, of drawing even per se, but there's God made color and pattern and, and it's just fun to work even abstractly. But when I've done some paint workshops and they have to do with representing God's beautiful creation and and nature. And we recently did the local like Radnor Lake reflection for the fall for the women. It was just, it's, it's my greatest joy to hear them, um, you know, want to stay and keep working at it. First of all, they're they're enjoying the moment, mm-hmm. and 
and just feeling God's delight, I think, in what their gift is and that they maybe haven't exercised it or had the opportunity to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And then they also, like a week or two later, my husband said this, he wanted to take that painting into his office, you know, Mm -hmm. and and my kids said they thought that should be in a museum or whatever. And and it's not even always about the results, but again, um, that they can enjoy the the ability to do that and, and again learning some tricks and yeah. tips on it and and then express you know the beauty that God has given us in creation to see and and reflect his beauty and his truth and his goodness mm. and well creativity I, is one of those maybe we could talk about this a little bit because it's there's a vulnerability to creativity that a lot of people struggle to maybe fully explore whether it's writing a song or doing a a painting, whatever it may be, when you put yourself out there, here's what I did, right? I mean, I kind of think about what I just said and people show me, oh, you didn't do that. I mean, that's putting yourself out there. That's true. This is a a work that I did. And, um, you know, and there's a, there can be a fear in that. Like when I said, sure. I could, I'm Especially one of those, the older we get. Yeah. I'm one of those guys who's like, I can only do stick figures and I can't do it. Like once you get beyond that, that's, but the truth is I probably painted myself into that corner and never allowed myself to get out, out of it. Right. Right. Somewhere along the line, many of us have gotten this label and it defend, depends on how you define artist. The word artist is, can be such a heavy word, you know, that means a lot of different things to different people. But for instance, like in a class with kindergartners and five and six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, you can ask them, who in this class can draw? And they'll all raise their hand. I can, you know, they'll be enthusiastic about Mm -hmm. it. Or who's an artist, you know? And then it starts, the, the older the kids get, somehow they've even labeled themselves, even if someone else didn't say something or another teacher or someone that didn't even realize they might've said something that maybe had that child get a, get a feeling like, oh, I'm really not good, or look at somebody else's work, and right. that other student or that sibling got more praise. And then they'll go, well, I, you know, I don't have that visual art gift that sibling or that student does. And then it, they just can stop exploring it. That can happen a lot, you know, like past 10 years old. The drawing on the right side of the brain talks about different stages of life, and a lot of that's been studied. And, mm-hmm. and, and then... Our culture, too, sort of has this thing, you know, a lot of cultures and and, in earlier times, people use their creativity so much more overall and just living day to day life and Mm -hmm. and in sewing or preparing a dinner. There's a lot of ways to be creative, but I guess especially in art, um, it just I think we've become so much more. Okay, that person's the artistic one and um, people don't feel as confident and maybe trying to decorate their home with something they've drawn or um, just the experience of being creative. Uh, We're we're more, I don't know, willing to be entertained. Yeah. And and there's a fear in partaking or almost, I don't know, laziness there's there's (laughs) what what comes to mind for me is we live in a culture now that doesn't want to see the growth side of things or the development side of things. Oh, it take it does take time. We, we want to things invest. to be perfect from the beginning. Yes. So even in movies now, there's this whole big rage of, of uh, you know, the, the story arc of a main character. Nobody wants to see the training anymore, the it's dedication like and too, the work. Uh, everyone wants to just see that they're perfect from the beginning. Right. And when I say everyone, meaning the writers and all the, like everybody skips over the, the steps. And so... In art, like what you're saying to me, what really comes out is a lot of times we'll see someone do a piece of art and then we'll compare it to a Picasso mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. say, oh, well, you're not Picasso. Right. And right. that that artist or whoever it may be then goes, well, I won't even do the development. I won't even try to get, they might have a gift, mm-hmm. yes. but they never develop it because someone told them from the very beginning, well, mm-hmm. you know. Right. And... And I have a couple stories too. I don't want to take up the whole time because I, I have you on here. But I remember in in my in my personal world where I, when um, this goes back twenty years ago, I remember I had put out a project of some songs, mm-hmm. and someone had heard it. Where I was interviewing for a job, and someone had heard it, and they were wondering, "Well, is Josh going to try and do the music thing, or is he going to try and do the ministry thing? What's he going to try and do?" 
And I sat down with them and they said, hey, well, we know you're doing the music thing. I mean, the ministry thing, because we've heard your music and that's not going anywhere. Oh. And I went, well, I'm just young. I'm, I'm developing it. And, and, but it was like a critique oh on it. But I thought, wow, that's, that, that's an interesting perspective Wow, that you're comparing. And now it's, you're in Nashville, right, where, where you have you know, these mega stars and different things. Mm-hmm. But that, that's kind of to the point. It's like, well, that's a creativity, music yes. and songwriting is a developing Absolutely. deal. And, and, and it's a process, you know. So, but someone was comparing someone else's end product to the beginning of something I was oh, doing. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. And that's someone else has pointed out to me, well, several people have, that I, I am seriously thrilled just watching a child. I mean, it's amazing to me. I'm in awe of how God, you know, gives us this gift and mm-hmm. then watching what kids are able to do from the beginning. And then I have many kids because they're homeschoolers um, over several years, not all of them, but uh, and it's it's wonderful to watch the gift develop, and I have to definitely encourage like middle school children. But I feel like God has naturally um, given me the enthusiasm. I guess it is like mm-hmm. I really am amazed. I don't have to pretend that I get excited about it. It yeah. just really does give me an excitement over and over again. How I can do a maybe step by step lion drawing that we just did with the middle school yeah. kids. And they all turn out so unique and so different. And that's incredible to me. And and so someone had, had mentioned, well, you have a gift of encouragement. So my my personal gift, I have honestly loved and enjoyed art from a very young age. And I continue to try and grow my skills and develop my skills, which mm-hmm. can be a struggle sometimes because I know a lot of the rules somewhat of art. I've studied a lot about how to create art and improve in different media and in different ways, but sometimes I can just hold myself up to a standard and it's ridiculous. But I, uh, it's so fun that the environment, having the kids come together and that we can create an environment that is encouraging mm-hmm. and that they're free to explore. And I do introduce critiques as they get older, but we reflect on what's helping and kids can help. They could say something like this area. That's so cool how you did that. I wouldn't have thought to do that. Now this area over here, it could probably be a little stronger if you, um, this just happened last week, you know, made these marks a little bit darker Mm -hmm. or maybe had a few more of those interesting butterflies coming out from this area here and whatever, uh, different colors and things like that. So I love that we can encourage each other in that environment. And, um, and the women, you know, adults do that too. I've done retreats that have been just so fun. I love connecting it with, you know, God's word, visual mm-hmm. projects with helping um, display and memorize scripture and, and all that. But, um, and just hearing who peop- how people haven't had the opportunity or got shut down, like, you know, mm-hmm. with negative comments and just label themselves that they couldn't do it. And then being in an environment where we're all just, it, it takes, um, actually it was Matisse that said, you know, it takes um, courage to create and for it, ourselves it and in an environment where you might hear a comment. And then some people, kids might not realize that something they might say might not be the best way to say something. Yeah. And we learn with that too, you know, yeah. but. Well, go back to think about what creativity is, right? Like if you go back to the very beginning in scripture, in the beginning, there was nothing in the earth that was void and, mm-hmm. and it was just dark, right? And then out of nothing, God creates, you know? And then when we think about art now, or it's one of the reasons why I love music, uh, it's mm-hmm. one of the reasons, I'll, I'll even take it a step further. One of the things that I really love in life in general is to go to places like a like a Disney World or mm-hmm. or a resort or, or something that is beautiful mm-hmm. that wasn't there before, that was swampland. Or that oh, was sure. whatever, and then and then I love being in a place where where someone had a creative vision to see that it, that this place could be so much more. Yes, and that's that's what art is. But in in each step of that process, uh, there's going to be some who say no, it could never happen, or no, I don't like that. Mm. But for the creative artist, they need that encourager like you <laughs> to say yes, you're on to something. Mm-hmm. You're you're on the right path, or have you thought about this? And when that when when that's presented in an encouraging way, it, it, to me, it makes the artist feel like, wait a minute, I'm not I'm not crazy. 
I'm actually on the right path and there's someone else who sees this too. And and it just encourages them on that they can yes. do it. Yes. And we all, I love that when you were saying that, you know, you have something, someone had something like at, at Disney World, mm-hmm. at Disneyland. I remember when I was a kid going there when it ooh, was kind of in, in the new stages, it was yeah. amazing, <clears throat> totally amazing. And, and songwriting is like that, putting music out there, something that didn't exist before. And, and I love even how the Bible talks about chaos, you know, it was almost like chaos and then bring it into order. Mm -hmm. And like with songwriting, there might be parts of art that get messy in the beginning songwriting. You're not quite sure or a story. There might be part bits and pieces of it, and then it can all come together and sharing in the process. And I've seen it just time and time again. Oh, and Bob Ross, of course, has that perfect, um, you know, happy accidents. Mm -hmm. And it's true that you can sometimes be in the middle of it and then something doesn't turn out the way maybe you thought that song wasn't there. And maybe you thought you were going in another direction. And all of a sudden it was this other, a melody or maybe that hook line. And in art, we, you know, can maybe start out with a landscape that we thought it was going to have this type of, you know, um, the trees over here. And then all of a sudden the focal point became more interesting in a different place. Yeah. And, and it's, you have to be kind of willing to kind of go, first of all, entering, have the, the courage to enter into it going, I have an idea. I think this is it. And then being open and aware also to the, how the Holy Spirit who, you know, can guide us in to maybe this is maybe this is the way to finish that out. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then also be able to finish it and then move on to the next thing yeah. and try that's, something else. That, that's true because one of the things I always pray as I'm doing something, whether it's it's uh, writing a message, studying a message, or uh, writing a song, any, anything that involves creativity is mm-hmm. one of the things I'm praying is is for the Holy Spirit to show me what the end product looks like. Huh. Because God knows. Right. And so what I'm trying to get in touch with is is seeing what God sees as the end product. Mm. And and that's just part of that creative process. So even uh, if if I'm writing something and, you know, we all as artists have things that we do that we go, it's not done. Oh, it, it's not. There's something. <laughs> what is that's what I'm praying for. Show me. OK, Lord, I don't see it. Right. Show me what it is. And sometimes you have to step away from it even. Oh, absolutely. And, and return back to it to, to get that. Uh, but that's that's one of the awesome things about it to me is, you know, is taking... And then it, it wasn't even there before. And now you've right. created it. It was yes. a blind page and now it's it's living. Yes. I think there's you probably there's biblical words, uh, the Greek and the Hebrew and all that about God being the creator. And then in a way that we are created in his image and sort of co-creators, but we don't create out of nothing. Mm-hmm. He created out of absolutely right. nothing. And and I encourage the children that we all borrow. He's the master artist in creation. And then also from other artists there, you know, yeah. and many artists of course have quotes about taking their inspiration from, from yeah. beauty and from beauty of the natural world that God created yeah. and that we don't really create, you know, how people try sometimes so hard to be so original mm-hmm. and, you know, it's okay to borrow a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And because God made all of us unique, it's all going to come out a little bit different. Yeah. Well, I've heard Tony Evans preach about this where okay. he said, uh, this is really cool for, for creatives and whatever. He goes, think about it like sure. this, whether whether it's a carpen, carpenter or whether anything that we have here that is in this world, uh, God is such a creative artist that he gave all other... Cre- of his creation, everything that you would possibly need, everything that you create from is something God supplied for you. Oh, yes, absolutely. And and, it, and it's all available to you. So there is nothing in this world that we can do that God hasn't... I mean, he's given us all of it, mm-hmm. right? So it's an interesting thought yeah. when, when you, you go... So yeah, we don't create out of nothing. We create with the tools that God's I given know. us to create. And then it's with. amazing that he gave us also unlike the animals. And I mean, as far as an imagination Mm -hmm. and the process that we have and the way he created our brains and everything to want to, we think about it and, and our intelligence and so forth and our hands and having it work together. And I mean, it is pretty amazing that man, I guess we're really talking about creativity, but God's gift to giving us, okay, you know, rocks, but then how do those things become all the way to wires and then rockets that go to the moon. And I don't know, but you have to have an imagination. You have to have this, this creativity that we're so blessed with. And 
Yeah, an elephant can, you can put a paintbrush in his trunk and he can sort of slap some paint around. <laughs> and I mean, that's where the definition to art uh-huh. can really get out there. But um, anyway. Well, yeah, let me read this because I think this is good. This, you have this printed and put up here. This is actually a quote from Franklin Graham, mm-hmm. but it says, the biblical worldview says there is a God, one who is personal, powerful, and caring, who created the world and everything in it. It states unequivocally that man is created in God's image, living in essence as God's co-regent over creation. Mankind, born and unborn, rich and poor, able and disabled, his intrinsic worth. Almighty God is a sovereign God, ruler over the nations, the states, and the empires and governments. He's to be worshipped and obeyed through the precepts and principles revealed in his word, his infallible word. He not only exists, but he is sovereign over all of history according to his wisdom and purposes, and he is intimately involved in every aspect of life. And uh, this is something you have on the wall for the kids when they come in. And, and, and I love that you have that out there. Well, and it helps remind me, and if parents are walking in there, um, that I don't believe art can be totally taught. Well, for me personally, as a teacher, I can't teach art separately without talking about God. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I do have believer friends. Uh, one of my closest friends that she helped me when I was kind of brought into, when they asked me to, first of all, I, I got introduced to teaching art in a tutorial. And so um, for, for our family, the path was we were led to be homeschool parents. And um, and then one thing led to a next where I was in a co-op and they said, well, we know you have background in art. We need you to teach art. And I'm like, I don't know how to really teach it. And I guess kind of backtracking a bit, a little bit about my story and I had fear about that. Well, I know my daughter and I enjoy art, and um, my, I have a, we have a daughter that is, um, at that time, she was in fifth grade, and her son was just in preschool. And I'm like, well, I, I love doing art with her, you know, around mm-hmm. the, at home, but to teach another, a class of fifth graders, you're asking me to jump in and do that, like, and this person, I felt like they were dragging me, you know, but that was part of a co-op. You have to help teach something, and I'm like, okay, I guess I'll try that. And then one thing led to the next. That was... 20 years ago, Mm -hmm. I actually had a student in that fifth grade class. I now teach her daughter. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So tell me, tell me a little bit more about that real quick. So did you have a friend, they dragged you kicking and screaming? Well, it was was just people who ran the co-op for the um, tutorial. So tutorial, for those who don't know, is when um, you decide to homeschool, you can do it outside of the classroom. And again, I'm not a do it myself person. I love community. I'm definitely a community person kind of person. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to bring my kids to um, have other teachers and influencers and have friends and so forth and learn in that kind of environment. And so um, you don't have to pay as much money. And the, the parents in that situation helped out where you would take turns, you rotate in and out of teaching certain subjects. And this is elementary at that at that grade level. Mm-hmm. And then later now people, you know, will pay people who are more trained or maybe have a background in it. And then um, you pay uh, more for the classes. But at that point it was the voluntary, you had to do something. And so I'm like, well, I I guess it's better than me teaching science class. Um, so I said, okay. And then I really, and I was scared, actually very scared to, um, I'm a number five child too. I'm not a natural. I don't feel myself as a natural leader. I didn't see myself in my family in that way. Um, I was the youngest of, of, uh, the three girls, there were two boys, three girls, Mm -hmm. and then three boys. And, um, so I just didn't think I knew what to do or I would know what to say to the children or how to lead them step by step or do it within the time frame. And so one of my sister's close friends, she was teaching at a local elementary school and she is a believer, but she was teaching in the public school. And um, she was so generous with helping me under, get directed with lessons. And a lot of my art posters that I have in my class, she donated so many art supplies to mm-hmm. me. It's incredible. And then she just sort of held my hand along the way. And then lent, one thing led to the next where after that co-op, I went to the other one at the church I mentioned before I came here. And um, I was actually paid money then. Um, I started getting paid. And then when that shut down, I needed to restart the program as the parents requested that I direct it. And then I had to even hire a drama teacher at that point to keep that certain yeah. program going. So there were God just keep kept calling me in these directions and or in this path. And then he enabled, he helped equip me. I still struggle. I still have struggles big time 
once I'm in the class, it's, I love it, but like trying to pick out the perfect lessons or I feel like should be the perfect lessons and go on this path mm-hmm. and that path. Cause I, I pick and choose different things yeah. with the curriculum and, and so forth. But, and I don't know that that ever goes away. I, I I'm, I'm thinking about even preaching honestly mm. as a, a pastor, I think that doesn't, there's, there's certain messages and things that I do that before I'm about to do that, I'm going, Oh Lord, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you know, and, um, and it, it's fine. You just pray that God, you've got this. Um, and right. then I always just pray, let nothing come out of my mouth. That's not from you, Lord. And there are times when it mm. does. And then I go immediately, Oh, that was me. I shouldn't, I shouldn't <laughs> have said that. But my, my point is what, the thing I always tell myself is what's the scarier thought if mm-hmm. before I go into those messages or before you go into the class, you go, Oh, I got this. Oh, oh. Um, um, if, if the ego gets involved or, or that. pride, <laughs> that that's probably, that's the scarier place. You don't mm-hmm. want to be there. Right. You right. Want, you want to go into things, having a good, healthy fear. And it, I think it keeps you grounded. Keeps me on my toes for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. And when I try some new things, I, I, I enjoy it. It's a challenge because I don't do the same program year after year. And mm-hmm. I have kids that started in one program in the elementary, maybe th- for three years, and then they'll even go into the more middle school teen classes. And that's another, it could be a couple more years, like some students I have had for up to five, six years. Yeah. Um, and so I, I definitely, you know, um, have a healthy re- reverence yeah. and respect for some of that, that I know I'll never know it all. Yeah. And yet I'm good enough, you know, the, the imposter syndrome, the imposter syndrome of me being a teacher or even to call myself an artist to a certain extent. I will say like I have a, I had a grandfather that was naturally amazing artist and eventually became an architect, um, but he wasn't, cla- you know, formally trained. Um, I would say our daughter has the, an, a, a gift. I will say this like, People and, and parents out there, if you have kids or even people that are just wondering, are they, you know, do they consider themselves an artist? I do believe that God does gift some people with a natural extra ability mm-hmm. in music, in writing, in um, dance, in, the, in visual art and so forth. Um, our daughter has that gift where she has always been drawn to drawing people and she'll start with the eyes. And to this day, like she did the most beautiful, one of her first portraits was of my father Mm. for his um, 80th birthday. And it was just amazing. And she can paint a portrait. I I know, I know how I've guided kids and how to do a, a, a portrait and so forth. But I think no matter how many years I'm on this planet, I'll never have that certain ability the Mm -hmm. way God gifted her to draw portraits Mm -hmm. or paint portraits. Um, But I know there's enough that we can, like you're saying back earlier about Mm -hmm. skill and taking the time to develop maybe our gift. Uh, You can learn enough to enjoy the gift of filling your home with beautiful piano music. I'm so grateful our kids were able through the gift of my father, allowing them to have a wonderful piano teacher and classical music filled our home. And it, yeah, it doesn't mean it. either one of them became classical pianists, you know, but actually our son works in music and our, our daughter, um, but they both enjoy still being able to play piano. And I loved hearing the music in my home. And then same thing with visual art that you, we can learn the skill enough just because we're not maybe selling our art or going to be somebody in a museum with it, but that we can just enjoy and delight in mm-hmm. the gifts that God's given us, that creativity. And it's a, a moment to be in the present and not get distracted, not just scroll through something, which all of us can, you know, go down that path. But, um, you know, the kids will often say, wow, time passed so quickly in class. I can't believe it's been a two hour yeah. art class already. And I think as adults and I think that's just something God wants to gift us with, that we can really have pleasure and delight in it. Mm. You don't always have to put every drawing or sketch you do up on the wall. And um, I don't know. So just sharing some of those experiences. I do want to have like more parent or grandparent and child, you know, um, type of experiences. And uh, I love to interweave, like I said earlier, scripture with um, visual, even just the the ability to take a walk and look at shapes and um, colors yeah. and use your, you can use your phone and then you can overlay like scripture on it. Um, I'm trying to take on well, the challenge. Well, to what learn. about, um, 
you mentioned the Lion of Judah. And when you go down the hallway in Create Up Studios, we're in your section um, between your two rooms, we have all the different drawings that the kids did of lions. Right. And you have the whole uh, the whole context and setup of you were you can see you were teaching them where the Lion of Judah comes from in Scripture, and the com- combining of the two words from the Hebrew, and and uh, and then you see all these drawings, and it's really neat to see that that you did that. And uh, just it gives them a whole different perspective when they hear those words, Lion of Judah. You know, where did that come from? Right. Where do you get well, these ideas you know that you what? want to do this? Well, I can almost. Um, also, I, I was born again after college. So that's a whole nother discussion. Mm-hmm. But um, and I actually finished school with my you know, art, art degree. And then I, like I mentioned earlier, I used to play interior guitar, design degree. interior <laughs> design degree, minor in art. And then, and then, um, it was actually a college professor that, um, I would bring my guitar to class kind of toward the end of when I was graduating. And I was, anyway, that there was a teacher that said, why aren't you doing that? And mm. I'm like, I don't really know hardly any chords. I don't really know much about music formally. And when I got out of college, there was a trip I was going to take, let's just say it that way with somebody and that situation didn't work out. So I took the money and enrolled in a, in like West Hollywood, there was a class, um, called the Dick Grove School of Music then. And, um, you can go and learn about performance. And, um, I just wanted to learn more about music. And that was another creative part of me that God put in me. And so I'm like, okay, maybe I'll take this path. And, um, so I joined that group along with some other 20 year olds roughly. And it was actually the path the Lord had for me, but not to become a, a country singer, which actually there was a, a, prof- a you know, an instructor in that program that said, you should move to Nashville and become a country singer. I always oh, loved, yeah. I always loved folk and Joni Mitchell and, and Linda Ronstadt and different, um, Bonnie Raitt, different kinds of Singers and so forth, but sing, sing one for me. No, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> going to do that now. <laughs> but um, but what was so amazing? Again, God's plan. He, mm. I got introduced. It happened to be a special school, and there were composers and arrangers. They would come from all around the world, Japan, even to take this certain program. Mm. The performance class it wasn't as highly rated as some of their other musical programs, but this certain performance class had an unusual amount of Christians in it. And the director of the program said, I met somebody that you might want to be friends with. Anyway, it turned out I got to know several Christians and I became a believer. Yeah. I met the Lord and and that was just incredible. That's that's where that happened. So I was singing like, you know, wasting away again in Margaritaville like the first semester. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, you're Getting good. carried away. <laughs> and then later it was like, I discovered Amy Grant mm. and my whole, you know, by the time my, the songs that I was writing at the end for my showcase and the songs I was performing, the covers I did, it was just a whole new world Everything that God changed. opened up. Yeah, It was night and day and, and it was huge. It was huge for me. And it was, there was just no turning back, yeah. you know, that's it awesome. Was, yeah, I love great. it. I want to read something to you. You wrote this. Okay. And I want you to respond to this because I think this is awesome. This this kind of, to me, describes who you are as a teacher. Okay. Uh, but you have this for your students. You say, as students grow and delight in exploring the world of art and their gift of imagination and creativity, my hope is that they'll be drawn to their creator, God, and be in awe of him and his amazing creation. God's beauty, goodness, and truth have been revealed and made visible to us all as his image bearers. I believe we can creatively share the good news through art, making and reflecting his love and his glory to others. Mm. What made you want to write that and put that out there? Wow. Well, uh, I guess just from reading scripture from the Psalms and from Romans and talking about how, you know, his invisible attributes Mm -hmm. have been made visible and his divine nature to all of us. And, and it's seen in, in, in the creation and it's, um, even my grandkids will go, that's wrong. It's not mother earth who made it, you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's, it's God, the father God who allowed Jesus to create this beautiful place that we are allowed and privileged and honored to live in. And, and that through his creation and it's not just nature, but people, I mean, you know, we see the image of God in each other and, Mm. 
and so that's my my because animals are created too and the natural world is created by God, but they don't have the ability that we've been given to be his image bearers Mm -hmm. and that we can create and we can think and we can use our imagination. And I believe art has been, as we study art history in the classes and especially for the older students, I talk a little bit more about it. Art has had different purposes over the year, but you know, way back in the caves, you know, when people were living and, and prehistoric or whatever, the the early times when art was first maybe recorded that they can see handprints and man has had mankind people have had this want and need and desire to create Mm -hmm. and that's because we're made in god's image and so we want to express um yes emotions and feelings but also what we see in our natural world and and reflect what we experience and our day-to-day but also um then just that we can do that, create some, something, mm-hmm. and that we can we can use our emotions to create. Mm-hmm. And how art was, of course, created um, and, and reflected in churches to um, you know give glory to God, help people in the beginning understand the story of God when before printing presses, the yeah. printing press came along and so forth. So in beautiful stained glass or in sculpture. Um, and so forth, you can see, you know, the story of the Gospels and the story of Christ. So um, I guess that kind of ties back to why I'm so thankful that I I have the privilege and the honor to be able to to teach um, families that bring their children to me. Although not all, uh, we I have a lot of homeschool families, obviously, mm-hmm. but not all homeschool families that come to me. I kind of assumed they were all believers and knew the Lord, but it was through um, one of your teachers, the other singer, uh, singing teachers, piano teachers here at Create Hope Studios, that she brought to my attention one of my students that I'd had for even two years. I did not realize that when she was learning a piano song, um, that's when that teacher realized that family doesn't really read the Bible Mm. and that child really didn't know that this was a praise and worship song and there's a praise and worship song. They're, they're played to glorify God and we can create art. You know, I'll, I'll, I would just speak naturally about that. Now I'm definitely, I have more Aware of a mindfulness of yeah. that not everybody comes into my class knowing the Lord and, or at a women's paint workshop or maybe a retreat or something, even though I think it's a Christian retreat that everybody would have that knowledge. And so I try to have a humility about it and a certain amount of teaching, but just, um, you know, respect where they yeah. might be coming from and, it could and be teach looked in at, a and loving way. Yeah, if you looked at it in a positive way, what a blessing it is to be that first touch mm. that you get to be in, in the art space and in the worship space and the music and mm. whatever it may be. Um, you know, what, uh, what my mind went to when you were talking about that was how special is it when you teach art, and you're you, primarily kids, you have adults too, but but with kids, and you talked about yourself as an artist when you were young and painting and what it did for you. I know what writing songs and things like that have done for me mm-hmm. uh, as a way to process emotion, as a way to work through things. I feel God gives us creativity to actually work through yes. life yes. and what we're what we're going through. And when you're teaching a child that you're, you're equipping them with tools that, that for life that will, that will help them to, to work through things, ways that they can um, maybe uh, take care of times when they're hurting and how they can express themselves and how they can de-stress or deal with anxiety or deal with things. And, and art and creativity can be that outlet. That yes. does that. So you're you're teaching something. I don't, I don't want to be critical of school because I, I have a whole story when it comes to school. But uh, I I needed I needed creativity so bad mm. when I was in school, so bad, mm. and I felt like I was always having to be somebody else. Mm. By but like I, I felt like I was being put in a. Can, in, in like a, a factory in a factory, <laughs> that, <laughs> which is how that was made for somebody else. That, that wasn't me. I, I, I've always in my mind, um, I see, I see the world in a different way. Uh, every, 
every when I'm reading or when I'm writing or doing messages, whatever my, whatever I may be doing, it's always set to music. Music unlocks wow. my brain. Cool. So that's always how I see the world. Now think about that in a school context. They don't allow much space for that. And, and so, and that's right. what I mean. And and it took me many years after to realize, wait a minute, I'm not stupid. No, no, I'm we're not, all just wired. We're wired differently. differently. Yeah. And that's what makes the world a beautiful, what if we didn't have the musicians yeah. and the poets and the writers mm. and the artists and, and, you know, it is unfortunate, yeah. I guess, the way our country just, you know, industrialization and we needed factory workers and we needed to set up a situation that the way the education um, was was you yeah. know structured and we needed to have kids yeah. sitting in a seat and doing it this mm-hmm. way and that way. And what's interesting, I think, from COVID, and I know not everybody's called to homeschool. My husband and I, like he was originally, well, he is a musician and we, we both are very creative people. So whatever that that's the direction we went and i know i think it's interesting since covid that some families were able to uh well had to homeschool and mm-hmm. they were still maybe in some ways having to push a bunch of knowledge into their kids and you know or, or whatever they there was instruction that had to go be done about a certain way but i think it also opened up um the possibilities and especially since a lot of people are working from home people can also school from home or mm-hmm. I think it our society is definitely changing in yeah. that way and opening up some, there's other possibilities yeah. and that respects other learning styles, expects um, how people yeah. are wired. And like you said, you know, it just wasn't your, to sit in the, cl- in the, in the seat. Mm-hmm. And then you, you know, it was, I remember being in second grade and the teacher giving me a list of all these numbers. I just filled in any number at the bottom of those big mm-hmm. equations and I was so surprised that the teacher actually took the time to add them up and realize that my answers are wrong. I just thought it was a waste of time. Like, <laughs> why do we have to do that? Like, we, we so I kind of relate to that. Yes. Yeah. My and, high school oh algebra, my, my high school algebra, the only questions I would get right were the odd numbered ones because the answers to those were in the back in of the, the book. In the back of the book. No, I had math phobia. <laughs> and then my dad, who meant well, tried to teach me how to do the math problem, but it was always different than the way the teacher in class did. And then I was really confused yeah. after that. And I would just have panic attacks trying to take yeah. a math test. So I, I get that yeah. too. And I had many wonderful teachers throughout the years too. I, I'm, I'm definitely not trying to speak poorly of it. I just remember feeling so out of place in the sense, and, and for me, just so, you know, some people know this, I, I was the class clown at my high school for my graduating class. And I didn't realize it at the time. I mean, I, I like cracking jokes and I like being funny, uh, but it was really a coping mechanism mechanism mm-hmm. for me because mm-hmm. I, there was just certain things in that world that I just knew uh, I just didn't have a chance. Wow! And but then there were other areas wh- that that came very natural, mm-hmm. uh, and and in those worlds of music and reading and and uh, English and comprehension and and a lot, every the tools that I use today quite honestly. Uh, but, but again, the re- what brought this up in the first place was the teachers who did see that in me, you know, my music teachers or uh, other uh, teachers who, who saw an area that maybe I was gifted in, just like they could see areas other kids are gifted in. Right. Uh, hold a, I mean, they hold a special place in my heart. Sure. Because all you need is a little... Yes. And you're... Give me that's, something, that's a little nugget. That's what I'm saying nugget. to you. That's, <laughs> that's who you are to these kids when you're mm. when you're doing that and you're equipping them with this tool that it's not going to end. Like when they have it and you can encourage them, keep using it. You can have this for the rest of your life and do this. Wow. It's such a powerful oh, it is, thing to me. It's, it's, an, it's an honor that I get to do this and that God has brought me here and... And, and, uh, it's, it's a joy. And, and yet the path, there are different seasons, you know, um, I am having more of, des- of a desire to, um, cause I've been so heavily into the homeschool hours and so forth. Um, and yet I've done a little bit, you know, on retreats and weekends and so forth, but I do want to open it up more to community. Yeah. And, um, I'm a grandparent now and I, I love that. Um, when I've done a few things with grandparents, um, Martha Bolton came in one time with her granddaughter and that was years ago, but I was just looking at those pictures not too long ago and I'm like, I really want to do more of that mm. and, um, shift some of, you know, um, 
it's my, my teaching schedule got really heavy. And anyway, I just know God's going to yeah. help well, me with that Well, you've been doing a couple of things. I know of, of some married couples in the church who have reached out and you've done some, some work with them and, and they come and say, look at the art that Celia helped us do. And, and you're more and more going into that world of, of helping the adults. Uh, right. really it's never too late. It yeah, is never too late. So cool. I know there's a psalm about that in in the the trees and anyway, not getting mm-hmm. you know that there's yeah, we can all still um, take these gifts and it's a great way to spend time on the planet and also that we can um, as parents or grandparents that it's an opportunity to have an activity to do. Yeah. You know, if you go to a movie, you you know you go and do things with your but um, so I want to offer more of that where they can experience the joy of creating together. Yeah. Well, I'll, let me just give you that encouragement for grandparents, anybody who's listening to this, uh, what a special gift that is to do something with your grandchild and have a piece of art that you work on together or whatever it may be that you can say, Hey, this is, this is something we did together that, that is lasting. Right. Right. And that, that you are, you had. So, Hey, so we only have a few minutes left here. So let's, let's talk a bit about, so create hope studios, uh, it, you know, Artful You is a part of that. And you guys are all doing something this summer that is super cool. Very excited. It's kind of a new spin on VBS with a creative perspective yes. to it that involves art and yeah. music and dance. All and in one. It's all in one. It's so cool. And Miss Lauren, Lauren Cochran, our children's pastor here yes. at the church, is going to do a thing. So it, it's uh, Create Hope Summer Camp. Right. It's going to be June 24th through the 28th, I believe. So it's going to be that week long. And Lauren was telling me all about it. It's really neat. It's it's all in one music, art and dance. And basically it's going to start off in the morning where she's going to have some worship time, yep. a little bit of like a devotion time. And then the kids, according to ages, will like make the rounds to the different sections of the creative places they can go. Right. And she was telling me, you're, you're part of it. You're doing a, a DIY, do it yourself, a room decor deal well like, what what's going on like it, this is kind of neat well that kind of ties in with um I've done different themes I guess to my camps um I love the indoor outdoor art camp I've done where I love tying creation in with um creating art and this one one summer it was so hot the parents were like are we seriously are the kids going to seriously be outside like half the time and I'm like nope we're going to change it up and so it happened to be, it happened to turn out to be an all girl class. And so I just thought, you know, we were going to do pillows anyway. And I'm like, let's just do things that they can, it can, they can bring in colors from their room and they can make a pillow and a painting and a sculpture that, you know, can be, um, used to decorate their room and they can, you know, they don't have to buy everything Mm -hmm. at, you know, the store to decorate their room. They could be empowered to that. Their creations can, can beautify their room. And, um, so that's what we did. And uh, so there's going to be not quite as much time as it I have in some of those camps, but I told Lauren, I'm thinking of the two favorite things the kids usually like to do. And it's usually a painting and a sculpture, at least those two. Yeah. So we'll have enough time to do a painting and work with some um, polymer clay, which gets baked and then you get to paint it and it turns so out fun. all shiny. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to be really fun. And I know her theme is like, let everything that has breath praise the Lord, yes. which is super those things just tie instantly in with so many possibilities. Yeah. You know, it's hard to limit it. But yeah, I think she has. There's only 12 spots left. So even by the time this is out there, you know, people are going to take it up. If you go to createhopestudios.com, you can sign up. It's going to be fun. But it, it looks... and I'm happy to actually team up with other. Yeah. That's my other heart too. Is that is another heart. Uh, I I really want to mention this, that as I go forward, I've been so blessed to have this space. It's been such a blessing when you said yes, that it it was an opportunity for me. But as I get older also, and I've met people within the church that are creative, there's a woman that used to teach um, clay and ceramics Mm. in high school. And then she's kind of, she did some job shifting, but I would love to, I have a kiln in my garage and hope to get it here someday. And um, opportunity, open opportunities. Um, I know you had Jill Smith come on that wrote the book Mm -hmm. and weave in. I want to have other people who've used their creativity in other ways. I know a potter and um, 
and different artists and use my space so that I can help, you know, go alongside with them. I have lots of materials and the space yeah. and, and the words kind of out there now, but then, um, have those artists share what they do, yeah. even if they're just demonstrating and I can structure a project along with that. But for people who are out there, you know, people can contact me and I, I really, truly want to see how yeah. we can do this. Um, cause there's it's so beautiful. much to And it's so, uh, multiply. it's so my, let me read this. This is the mission of Create Hope Studios. We exist to bring forth the creative gifts in all of us by providing a positive, inspiring, Christ-centered space for creators to create in the areas of visual art, dance, music, and writing. And where that comes from is when, whether it's kids or whatever, you know, as we do these things, and what you're just talking about right there, is that they would, they would find their joy and the things that they do creatively in the church. Mm-hmm. Right. And that the greatest moments that they've had, they could look and say, the church is where I had that. Absolutely. In a positive way. You know, in a, in a world that wants to find every negative thing wrong with the church, mm-hmm. that this this would be a place where Create Hope Studios would be, oh my goodness, the church totally fostered my gifts and developed, and, and I was able to use it for God's glory. Yes, ab- absolutely. Mm-hmm. And and it is important. It's becoming more and more important than when I was a kid or you were a kid because the darkness, it's really infiltrating all kinds of, yes. oh, come to this place to create a painting. And and it's amazing the, the imagery, how dark it has mm-hmm. become. And so I have had people, you know, seek me out because even um, some places where you think they're just going to have paint a, a simple painting or whatever, mm-hmm. but there might be some imagery and some influences that, you know, just it, it's not light and yeah. it's not, it doesn't mean that everything we create has to be all cheery, smiley and, mm-hmm. and all that sort of thing, but it's at least a place for children. It's safe that Create Hope Studios, it's going to, it's not going to, um, I don't know. No, well, think about it like this, right? When I, when I read something like this, someone might be listening and you you say the words art, dance, music, and writing. And in the back of someone's mind, they may go, but what kind of art and what kind of dancing and what kind of, because, because you, you're concerned, you want to know, and you're right. It's, it's not, we're not just you know, everything. You don't have to. Everything doesn't have to be pink flowers and right, fluffiness. Right. It's it's like yeah, Picasso's Guernica, for instance. Like but that's why I said for God's glory, could, right. right? Like for what does that look like? And 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 uh, there is a trust factor in that. But Create Hope Studios is all about doing this for God's glory. So yes. we're very mindful mm-hmm, of absolutely. of all of these things and. And uh, people can trust, that's for sure. So, hey, so we got to wrap this up because we're almost out of time. It's been fun. I I do want to encourage people to go to createhopestudios.com and for Celia's classes and and, um, uh, the many things that you're doing and to reach out to you even if you want to do something uh, as a couples or uh, singles and do some artwork, adults or whatever. Yes, we can do private, you know, little paint parties. and, um, And for teens too, sometimes teens have a hard time finding a place to go and what to do. Mm-hmm. They might, you know, they're sort of in between some of these adult things that they'll have these paint and sip things. And, you know, um, and so I have, uh, one mom that reached out to me and she's just like, we can't do, for instance, your regular scheduled classes next year, my teenagers. And that parent has had many of her kids, you know, be with me, but she's like, but we still want to do some things here and there. Can we book some, some nights? And I'm like, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And we have just a wonderful space to do that. Yeah, it's 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 awesome. So welcoming. I can't I can't uh, encourage people enough. Go check out Celia and the work she's doing with Artful You at CreateHopeStudios.com. Do the if you have kids out there who want to be in the uh, Create Hope Studios camp this summer, June twenty fourth through the twenty eighth. Go hurry go, up. Go hurry Filling up. up. It's gonna fill up. <laughs> I, I, this is gonna be a, a new every year thing because it's it's such yeah. an awesome idea. I love it so much. So gonna close again with Ephesians two ten for we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So thank you, Celia. Amen. This it was, was my pleasure. Oh, it was thank awesome. You. Was it as bad as were, you were nervous? <laughs> it was, what, was it was it all right? It was absolutely fun. Just like you said, it was going to be fun. Oh, it's, so it's, 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 you, it's so you fun. have a way of bringing out 
the comfortable, <laughs> fun conversation styles. Yeah, things. well, it's because I'm excited to have you here at the church and the work that you're doing is just awesome. It's been a blessing it, to And be it's here. so cool, you know, when God gives us these, these visions and these things of what God wants to do, and we get in line with it. He brings the people along and, connect, and connects us, right? It was so quiet. And now I love it. Mm-hmm. Hearing the hallways and hearing, you know, guitar students strumming Ugh. and the dance, seeing the little ballerina dancers, you know, run to their class. It's so cool. And then hearing the pianos and the singing. It's, it's very exciting. Well, it's funny. We do these podcasts and, and we'll have music piano lessons going on in the background sometimes and, and some of the guests will start talking and they have their own little soundtrack that's happening oh, with yeah. the piano in the background. Sometimes I'll have to hush my teen students. Oh. They can get a little loud like, hey, they're taping a no, podcast that's right what now. it's all about though. <laughs> to me, it just, you, you said it, it's life. Yeah, and, it is. And it's so cool to have it uh, with the church that is just alive and things going on nonstop. So, yeah, and you alive. are a part of that. So thank you. Blessed to be here. Yeah. Thanks. So special thanks to Celia Van Marth and her work at Artful You. And uh, thank you everybody for listening to the podcast and share it with your friends and your family. Let people know about it and go check out createhopestudios.com. It's a Absolutely. lot of, a lot of great stuff going on there. Okay. So we will be back with another episode next week. <laughs>